I've, I've got a candle right here. And what we're doing today is just the reflex uh, arc. One of the examples that they use with the reflex arc is if I accidentally touch a candle, I'm going to pull my hand away. Uh, now, in this case, of course, it wasn't accidental. Um, I know I was going to go near the candle flame. I know I was going to feel it. And of course, the moment I feel the heat, I'm going to remove my hand. But let's say, for example, that I didn't know the candle was there. I didn't know the flame was there and I accidentally touched it. I'm going to have an immediate reaction of pulling away and after pulling away, then um, I'm going to realize, oh, there was a pain feeling. So before I even realized that I'm experiencing any pain, my hand is already pulling away from the flame. And we do this because of a feature we call the reflex arc. And it has to do with the nervous system. So let me share my screen so we can go through the nervous system. Okay, so to be able to understand the reflex arc uh, properly, you have to know the structure of the nervous system. Now, yesterday you had to draw a few structures with regards to the nervous system and go through the notes on the nervous system to be able to understand this properly. And so what we're seeing here is a basic neuron. Now there's three types of neurons, but I want to show you the basic structure of a neuron so that you understand how the nervous system works. The neuron will receive a message on this side. So it receives a message from another neuron on this side via the dendrons. And over here, this, this, we, it touches and feels. It, it's called a synapse. So one neuron connects with the next neuron via a synapse. This side is called an axon. It sends a message to, uh, through the axon via the synapse onto the dendrites on this side. It receives the message on the dendrites and then sends the message along. As you can see the arrows over there, it sends the message along to the next neuron with its own axons via the synapse onto the next dendrite. So it's a, it's a messenger um, that is sending along, the, um, along a message. But a very important feature of this is that it only sends a message along in one direction. So if we take a look at it, so over here, I'm gonna receive a message. So over here, I'm gonna have an axon from another or more neurons. It receives the message over there and then passes the message along like this to its axon. So it receives over here and sends the message along here to the next dendrite of the next neuron. This is the cell body. You can see it's got a nucleus. Over here is the axon. The axon has quite a few important features. Um, it's got some insulation around it called a myelin sheath. Now the myelin sheath is composed out of a few more cells called Schwann cells. So they're supporting structures. They're supporting cells to the basic neuron. And what they do is they insulate like electrical wiring because this is an electrical message we're sending along, a low voltage electrical message that we are sending along. And this acts as insulation. So the message doesn't escape before it reaches the endpoints, which is the axons over there. And so it, by insulating this, it, it, it prevents the escape of any messages from the axon and it speeds up the the sending of the messages 
Now, it's quite unique because not only does it send messages along here, you can see there's little holes inside my Schwann cells, inside my Malian sheet, which is quite unique in terms of insulation because what it does is it actually helps speed those nodes. We call it the nodes of Ranvier. It's a, of the name of the a French scientist and it speeds along the signal. So the signal doesn't only go along here, but actually jumps from one node to the next node, speeding along this electrical messenger. Now, when it gets to the end here and it connects to the next neuron, what it's going to do is it goes from an electrical message to a chemical message. So this is when the two, uh, two um, neurons meet at the axon. This is the axon of the first neuron and it's sending to the dendrite of the second neuron. So this is an axon and this is the dendrite. And messages can only go one way. So the purpose of this synapse is so that messages can only go in one direction. It cannot go from the dendrite. It cannot go from the dendrite to the axon. It needs to go from the axon to the dendrite. And it, it prevents that messages, it makes messages only go the one way and one direction. And that's very important in terms of the functioning of the nervous system. And when you do the reflex off, you'll see why that is important. So, if we then take a look at the neurons, there's three different types of neurons we have. We have what we call a motor neuron. Now, a motor neuron will take messages from the central nervous system, so the brain, as well as the, uh, ner uh, the nerve cord, and send that along to your muscles to make a reaction. And so, all motor neurons look like this. We also call them multipolar neurons because there's multiple poles on that side coming out of my cell body. Then we have a sensory neuron, which we also call an unipolar neuron because of the position of the cell body. You can see there's only one place where there's an exit for, uh, from the cell body. And so, when I, whenever I feel something and I get a message from my senses, this is the neuron that takes the message from the, that sense organ, whether it's touch or taste or hearing or whatever, or a sight, it takes that uh, message and sends it towards, uh, that's, the, uh, that's where it receives the message and it sends it towards the central nervous system. So the spinal cord or the brain. Then we have one that connects the two. We call, this is also a multipolar neuron. It's called an interneuron. And it communicates between the motor neuron and the sensory neuron. And we'll see that in a moment when we take a look at the, the reflex arc. Let us just make sure what is the difference between the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system is only the brain and the spinal cord. And here we're going to find a bunch of mostly interneurons. Then the peripheral nervous system is everything that comes out from there. So your sensory neurons, it takes messages from, for example, the hand towards the spinal cord and then to the brain. Or the other side of it is when I have a message from the brain or the spinal cord and it sends a message along to a muscle to contract and to, to have an action that is going to happen. This is my basic, uh, this is a cross section through the spinal cord then, showing the structures that are gonna be involved in my reflex action. This is the spinal cord. You have to know the structure of the spinal cord. I'm just gonna go through the sections that is needed for the reflex arc. In the reflex arc, we receive a message. We receive a message from the sensory neuron. So there's your sensory neuron. You can see there's the cell body 
of the sensory neuron. Please don't write on my screen if you can. There's a sensory neuron and the cell body of the sensory neuron. So it receives a message from the side and takes it to the spinal cord. Then it will then go into the spinal uh, cord and give the message to interneurons over there. The interneurons will then send the message to the motor neuron and the motor neuron will go to the muscle and tell it to react. Now notice, we're only going to go into the spinal cord here. It's not going to the brain yet. And that's what it's important about the reflex of. There's a millisecond difference to go to the brain. Um, but that millisecond difference can make the difference between the body being damaged by something or not, like a flame, as in the example we gave. So that millisecond difference, if I only go through the spinal cord, it means that I can then bypass the brain for a moment and have a quicker reaction because of the reflex arc. What do we have with regards to the reflex arc then? It's then this. Here's our example, same as the example I gave a moment ago. I have a stimulus being given. Okay, so there's a stimulus. And you have to describe it. You see that there's some points below here. You, whenever you ask the reflex arc, you, you follow these exact same points as I'm listed here, as uh, these are listed in your notes as well. So I'm going to go through um, and show you on the diagram where each one is. So there's the heat receptors in your finger. They pick up a stimulus. Remember, the, the word stimulus is going to be important. Please don't confuse the word stimulus with the word impulse. It's a stimulus first. Um, and so whether it's a prick on the finger from a needle or you stepping on a thorn um, or, um, or um, your a bright light, the uh, bright light in your eye can also be a stimulus that's going to have a reflex arc. The only difference is that when it's light, it doesn't go to the spinal cord. It goes to the brain. It's still a reflex re arc, a reaction, but it goes to the brain and directly back. But most of the examples we have is that of the that of something that is being felt, a stimulus. In this case, the stimulus of heat. Then that stimulus is then converted into a nerve impulse. It's converted into a nerve impulse. And the impulse is going to travel down the sensory neuron over there into the sensory neuron. And the impulse is then carried into the dorsal root, dorsal root of the spinal cord. Let's talk about dorsal and ventral very quickly. Dorsal and ventral. Okay, so when we talk about dorsal and ventral, dorsal is at your back. Now, dorsal normally would refer to the top and ventral would refer to the bottom of an animal. In our case, our because we're standing only on two legs, we, we as you've learned from the human um, evolution section, we are bipedal and we are standing upright. So our dorsal actually becomes our back and the ventral to the front. So if the spinal cord has to run down here, then this side will be the dorsal side and I'm going to mark it D and this side is going to be my ventral side. My front side is my ventral side. So, and that's because of the way that we, we are standing upright instead of standing on all fours. We're bipedal, we're not quadru quadrupedal like other animals. Imagine then this is then the dorsal side. So that's your back and that's your front side of your nerve cord and so the back side the dorsal side we say it goes in via the dorsal side of your nervous cord then there's a synapse between the sensory neuron and the interneuron and it's important you get a mark for saying there's a synapse 
Okay, so the sensory neuron makes a synaptic contact with the connector neuron. The interneuron, we also call the connector neuron. You can use either word, we both accept them. Then, the connector neuron makes a synaptic contact with the motor neuron. And you it's important that you mention that synaptic. You, get a, you can get a mark for that. This is a lovely question to ask as an essay question as well, because it's got, got so many points or part of an essay question. And they love asking um, this part of, of an essay question and combining it with, for example, um, the changing of light or the changing of distance in the eye, which we'll do later. Um, how you observe the changing distance in the eye. So there's many such examples as essay questions. Um, where this is, forms part of an essay question. Then, the motor neuron leaves the ventral root. There's the ventral root. There's the ventral root. That's the ventral root. So that was dorsal. That was ventral. So it comes in from the back side of the nerve cord and leaves in through the front side of the nerve cord. So all of the sensory neurons come through in, in the back and then the motor neurons come in and leave via the front side of the spinal cord. Motor neuron then carries the impulse to the muscles of the arm. The muscles are the effectors. They have an effect. And the muscle then contracts and pulls the hand away. It pulls the hand away so it doesn't get burned. Action of pulling your hand away from the flame is an example of a reflex action. And the path that the impulse travels through is called the reflex arc. Notice at no stage here that we mention the brain. The brain was not mentioned. The brain only, it's a bit slow. It comes only afterwards. So a second impulse is then sent from the connector neuron to the brain because it, it takes a bit longer. We don't want to delay the reaction that, uh, of something that is going to harm us. So only afterwards you realize, oh, now my finger is stinging. Now my finger was burned. It's, it's, um, I'm only experiencing pain afterwards. I'm only experiencing the pain afterwards of this. You're now able to feel the pain and you're now placed, um, uh, that you have placed, your, and know that you have placed your hand on something hot. All of this occurs very quickly. In the example, the reflex action is controlled by the spinal cord. And in other instances, reflex actions can be controlled by the brain. For example, when we sneeze, when we cough, when we blink our eyes, those are controlled by the brain. But also, again, even if the reflex action is controlled by the brain, it's only afterwards that the brain realizes, oh, just, you know what, that was sore. Um, and a lot of times we don't even realize that we have blinked, for example. Uh, so you blink, but you, you don't necessarily have to um, realize that you, uh, that you blinked. Okay, so that is the reflex R. That is the reflex R. And that is what I wanted to do for today's lesson, is just to discuss the reflex arc and how that works. Uh, to be able to understand it properly, you need to understand the structure of the nervous system, yesterday's lesson very well. And secondly, uh, you need to actually memorize this whole thing. Uh, this is in your notes. You need to memorize this off my heart. It's a lovely question to ask in any exam. It is usually asked. They barely ever leave it out. They love asking it as part of an essay question. So it's a, it's a nice section to, uh, to know off by heart because it's an easy six, seven, maybe even eight marks that you're going to get in the, in the paper. Um, the reflex arc. You are going to get it somewhere. The minimum you're going to get is two marks and then you can it, you can get up to about seven eight marks for this uh, question on the reflex arc 